and then there's gets dirty of them. Loads them up. Men, women, children, weapons, supplies, livestock. All, everything you can get on there. Start sailing across the Atlantic in 1565, two years after the French arrived. But his journey is not off to a good start. Immediately after leaving, two of his boats turn around and go home. They don't want to do the Atlantic journey. They think they will die trying to cross the Atlantic or they'll get killed by those horrible great lizards called alligators that they've heard of in Florida. Three more of his ships get picked off by English and French pirates. So immediately, Menendez is down to 25 ships. Meant to make matters worse, as he's halfway across the Atlantic, he gets hit by a hurricane. By the time Menendez reaches the coast of South Florida, he has five ships left. Menendez is impatient and he's angry. He doesn't know where his fleet is, or how long it will take him to regroup. So he sets sail, not going north, up the coast of the, east, of the east coast of Florida. Along the way, he's making notations on his map. Large bays and ports have made a great place to settle a colony. On September 2nd, 1565, he spots a nice large bay that makes a great place, and he makes, marks it on his map. The next day, September 3rd, 1565, he reaches the French, fort, the French settlement of Fort Caroline, to be shock of his life. The French have reinforced. They've brought over an additional 700 trained soldiers with four brand new warships, several times the size of Menendez's little boats. Menendez is a smart man and he's a good tactician. He knows no matter how good he is at fighting, he will not win that fight. So he makes the smart move. He leaves, goes south again, goes back to that nice large bay he spotted only a day earlier. Settles his people there, and on September 8, 1565, Menendez himself steps foot on Florida soil. Thus, the colony of St. Augustine. Welcome to our colony. Thank you. Thanks. But it gets a lot darker here. The whole time the Spanish are celebrating their first Thanksgiving to be held in North America, the French are on their boats watching the Spanish. The Spanish are ashore watching the French. They're both watching the weather because there's a hurricane coming. They both have to get out of this storm. The Spanish are already on the beaches. They tie everything down. They're going to ride out the storm with the local natives. The French on their boats realize they can't make it back to their colony to tie everything down before the storm will hit them. So they do the next best decision. They start sailing out into the Atlantic. They're going to try and outrun the storm and go around it. People have done it before them, so they're going to try their luck. So they do that. This is when Menendez, the brilliant tactician that he is, comes up with his best and most daring plan. Let's go up to Fort Caroline. Nobody's there, the place is empty. Let's go up and take it. So he does that. He marches his army 20 miles north for a hurricane. Go and take the French fort. He takes it without losing a single man. He puts the Spanish flag above it, calls it Fort San Mateo, comes home. And when he gets back to his colony of St. Augustine, he gets the best news of his life. The French fleet has wrecked off the coast. French sailors are washing up on the beaches to the south of them. So he starts marching south, picking up Frenchmen along the way. In total, he gets about 400 Frenchmen. He gives them all a very, very simple choice. They can all live good, happy, peaceful lives as good, loyal subjects to the King of Spain. Or they can all die horrible, painful deaths. Well, Menendez executes 397 Frenchmen. He spares three. The rest of them, he slits their throats and leaves them to bleed out on the beaches. Isn't history fun? Yes! Yeah, yeah. 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 I love it. Learn about all the horrible oh, atrocities God. humans have committed against one another. <laughs> right, Ben, we all ready to move on? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Let's go this way, guys. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ, guys. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, it was the best thing. Hey guys, this is the flags of St. Augustine. Oh my god. You're famous. They must have been committed to live in the ground. What? <laughs> yeah, I'm literally stepping on corpse. Every flag you see here has flown over St. Augustine for some amount of time in its history, beginning with this first one. 
This is the flag of King Carlos III of Spain. I apologize, it's blowing all over the place. We've lost all of our latches. But, the flag of King Carlos III of Spain. We get it in 1784. We would have it until 187 years. Well, in 1821, we get this flag.